All right, welcome back YouTubers. In this video, we're going to begin a new topic dealing with conservation of energy. So if you remember, we've already looked at conservation laws uh, associated with conservation of mass and conservation of momentum, linear momentum. And we developed those, if you remember, by examining a differentially small control volume in a fluid. So we're gonna continue a similar a similar approach here to look at conservation of energy but in this presentation I'm gonna simplify it a little bit for the purposes of of uh, just introducing the topic so uh, this uh, this Bernoulli's equation uh, where this comes from uh, can be a little confusing and so I want to try to keep the initial presentation as simple as possible just so we can get uh, the basic ideas uh, across to you hopefully so if we apply conservation of energy on this control volume in some kind of a, a flow. Uh, so this is the control volume in red and there's fluid uh, flowing through uh, into and out of this control volume. So we can write uh, an energy balance on this control volume and it would include uh, these terms. So on the left hand side these are the net rate of change of energy in the control volume. So the first uh, term uh, includes kinetic energy the second term, uh, delta EP, represents potential energy. And the third term, delta U, represents internal energy. And so remember, internal energy is an expression of the atomic or molecular level, vibrations, rotations, spin, those kind of things that, uh, that are present uh, in, in the material. Those are captured in the internal energy term. So this first uh, term uh, or this term this whole complete set of terms on the left hand side uh, represents the change uh, in energy in the control volume the difference between the final uh, and the initial state and so that equals to uh, what uh, the net transfer of energy into and out of the control volume and so that can happen in several ways uh, one mechanism is by work uh, that's done either on the control volume uh, by the surroundings or by the control volume on its surroundings. And so by work, we're talking about mechanical work here, or often we refer to that as, uh, as shaft work. Then another mechanism for energy transfer is by heat flow. So this second term on the right-hand side represents the net heat flow uh, into the control volume, uh, the heat added to or removed from the control volume. And then the final term represents uh, energy that crosses the boundaries to enter or leave the system by flow. And so this, uh, by the mass flow, uh, because remember we have a, a flow uh, in general going through our control volume, uh, so this mass flow can carry energy with it. And so I'm denoting this mass, uh, mass flow term by a capital M uh, here uh, to distinguish that from the mass flow rate, which we'll see uh, as we go to the next slide which is denoted by a lowercase m. So let me write this equation here on the, next, uh, on the next page so we can take a look at these terms more carefully. So we have our energy balance, right? The net rate of change of energy in the, associated with the control volume, which involves kinetic, potential, and internal energy terms, is equal to the net uh, inflow uh, of work, uh, heat, and energy carried uh, into or out of the control volume by, uh, by the mass flow. So now we're going to make a few assumptions that can help us uh, try to simplify this relationship a little bit. And so the first assumption we're going to make is that we're at steady state. Uh, so if we're at steady state, then these, uh, the net rate of change, the initial minus final state, is going to be the same. Uh, so all these terms on the left-hand side go to zero. The next assumption that we're going to make is that there's no heat flow into or out of the system. And so what this is really saying is that uh, any temperature differences between the control volume and its surroundings are very small. Because remember, uh, heat flow, at least by uh, conduction, is driven by temperature gradients. So this statement really means that any temperature gradients or temperature differences between the system and the surroundings are small, so there's no net heat flow uh, occurring uh, into or out of the, the control volume. The third assumption we're going to make is that we don't have any mechanical work uh, being done. Uh, so there's no, no what we call shaft work uh, being done uh, on the system or by the system on the surroundings. 
So when we do this, uh, this leaves only the flow terms left uh, to consider, uh, these uh, terms here. So we have zero, the left-hand side, equals uh, m in minus m out. Uh, and remember, this is a large or uppercase m. And so uh, we can also write this per unit time. If we know the mass the energy in minus the energy out due to the mass flow, uh, we can just divide both of these terms by time uh, and get a rate of energy transfer uh, due to the mass flow in minus the rate of energy transfer out due to the mass flow. Right, so this dot represents the rate or the per unit time change. All I've done is basically divided both of these terms by t. Okay, so now uh, let's, let's uh, expand or, or think about what, what could be involved in these mass flow terms. Uh, so what kind of energy can be carried into or out of the control volume by the mass flow? We have kinetic energy, so this kinetic energy in minus kinetic energy out uh, by the flow. We can have potential energy carried into or out of, the, out of the control volume by flow. And we can have internal energy carried into or out of the control volume by flow. And then we have a fourth term, this uh, W dot. So what is this? This is the flow work. Uh, so this, this represents uh, the changes in pressure and volume that can occur in the fluid associated with its motion or transport into or out of the control volume. So this is often called flow work or, or PV work uh, to represent that. So what I want to point out uh, here is that these these terms uh, look like the kinetic potential internal energy terms on the left hand side of our original balance, uh, but these uh, terms uh, here at the bottom these represent changes uh, or energy transferred transported into or out of the control volume by flow. Whereas these terms that we canceled out represent the net change within the control volume, the difference between its initial state and its final state over whatever time period we're looking at uh, by any mechanism. So here we're just looking at, uh, at energy changes associated with the flow only.